Hi, this is Lead Pastor Clayton Beck of the Well Community Church. I'm so glad you've joined us to listen to this message. Listen, it's my prayer and hope that you hear the encouraging truth God has for you in His Word today. You have a mission for me. You knew my name and you called it. Long Last couple of weeks we've been going through, is that in the Christmas story? And we've looked at a couple of unique passages in Matthew chapter 1 as we gone, went through the lineage of Christ, establishing the legal right to the throne by Jesus the Messiah. And uh, like it needs to be established, he is God's son, right? So uh, he is the lineage. But anyway, we've been going through that. And today we move from is that in the Christmas story to what is the Christmas story, right? This is the Christmas story. We'll be talking about today and tomorrow night. But uh, look uh, at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 with me. This is what the scripture says. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. Many of you are probably familiar with the Christmas story. I want you to just, you know, take yourself back. I want you really to put yourself in Joseph's shoes. You need to see it from his eyes to really understand what's taking place. And so even if the story seems familiar, again, it may enlighten you to some, some great truths in Scripture if you just see it through Joseph's eyes as we go through this today. Because you have to imagine what was going through Joseph's mind when Mary gets together with him and says, hey, I got something I need to tell you. And Joseph, all excited, you know how... Guys, you know how it is when you're dating and all that. You just can't wait to be with the girl, right? Some of, some of you remember that, right? Amen. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. One happily married man. <laughs> Hope there's more than that. You can't wait to talk to the girl. And so he's excited to talk to Mary. And she's like, hey, I know. Hey, Joseph, it's great. Yeah, well, let's talk. But we got to really talk. Hey, I'm pregnant. And Joseph's thinking, how'd that happen? <laughs> it's not mine. What do you, I mean, you know, I think there's probably that moment where he's thinking, what? What did she, I don't, I think I misunderstood what you said. <laughs> I don't know what rhymes with pregnant, but there's something else, right? She tells him the story and Joseph, he gets the news and you know, man, it's, it's like a sucker punch to the gut, right? Because we just, you know, I love the Bible. The Bible's just real. And so what's the real story? The real story is Joseph's girlfriend ends up pregnant. It's not his. And Joseph is going to struggle with what to believe. Right? My girlfriend's pregnant. It's not mine. I know that. She claims it's God's. What kind of story is that? I mean, couldn't you come up with something better than that? Right? He didn't know what to think. Mary keeps sticking with her story. And no matter how ridiculous it may have seemed, he had to be thinking to himself, what do I do now? You ever thought that in life? What do I do now? Ever had something happen in your life? Just the world just turned upside down and you're like, what do I do now? Hmm. Now there's a lot of world that's going to be asking that question this Christmas. You know, tomorrow is the, I hate to say this, but it's the number one day for heart attacks in the U.S. Christmas Eve. Number one day for heart attacks. All the stress of the holidays and all the stress of everything, and everything on TV looks so perfect, doesn't it? And yet you all know everything's not perfect. And some people can't deal with it, and they're asking themselves, what do I do now? Listen, we don't know a lot about Joseph. We've got seven verses here. And those seven verses are going to tell us everything that you need to know about Joseph. Even though we don't know a lot, 
as far as a lot of details, we know enough in those seven verses to give us the character of who Joseph was, and he's someone we should have as a model for character of faith as we go through this. But um, no matter what he thought, he cared for Mary. You have to understand he loved Mary. He was in love with her. He cared for her. And in spite of the news, the sucker, you know, punch to the gut, whatever it is, he just thought, man, I'll just deal with this quietly. He could have had her stoned. He could have had her killed. He didn't want the gossip and the scrutiny and all that stuff to come into play. He cared enough for her. He's like, man, I'll just, you know, I'll move her out of the city. (laughs) I'll get her all taken care of. I'll get her out of the limelight, the gossip, and I'll start to move on and I'll figure out what do I do now, right? I'll figure out how to handle all this. And her story, Mary's story, could he trust the story? He's struggling with this in his mind. He probably thought it was a dream, a bad dream, a nightmare. And I'm sure he was, you know, mentally exhausted, emotionally spent. And the Bible tells us in verse 20, as he considered, that word considered, you can put in whatever word you want to there, thought, contemplated, debated, questioned, mulled over, mulled over. Some of you, when you're, what do I do now? Can you, are there certain things you just mull over in your mind over and over and over and over and over? What do I do? As this is all happening, we get to verse 20. As he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. First thing I want to just point out is that God knows who you are. I want you to understand God knows who you are. When we get to that, when the uh, angel calls out to him, Joseph, son of David, I mean, yes, it's establishing the lineage through which Christ would come, But again, it's also understanding Joseph's place in that lineage. Joseph, son of David. Let me ask you something. You think anybody knew who Joseph was? Most of the time, they called him what? A carpenter. If you needed something fixed, and probably on the cheap, right? Get a hold of Joseph. Joseph can fix it. He can fix anything. You think anybody walked up to Joseph and said, Hey, Joseph, son of David. No, but God's angel, God's messenger did. Why? Because God knows exactly who you are, knew exactly who Joseph was. It isn't that God just knows your name. It isn't that he's just familiar with you. He created you, but he knows exactly who you are, where you're from, and where your place in history, the timeline of everything comes about. He knows exactly who you are. And this drives home the point that God has a plan for you. We talk about this so much here at the well. I hope you don't get tired of it because I don't want you to ever buy into the thought that you don't matter. You do matter because God has a plan and then he has a purpose for you always, always. Listen, Joseph didn't know. Again, if you go back in chapter 1 and read all the the generations, the lineage, Joseph had no idea that God had been working for generations to bring about what was about to happen. Joseph didn't know there was a plan. His world seemed out of order in chaos, right? I mean, you you understand this, right? Um, Joseph had plans. I'm going to marry the girl. I'm a carpenter. We're going to build a humble little house. We're going to have a humble little family, a humble little life, right? I don't need much. I got the girl and love and everything's great. He didn't have a lot, but he had big plans. But then the moment Mary says, I'm pregnant, and the moment Joseph says in his mind, that's not my kid, That all went crashing down. 
right? All those plans went out the window. Joseph thinks his life is falling apart. He doesn't realize that it's falling into place, right? Joseph, son of David, what's the angel saying? Joseph, there's a plan. There's a plan, Joseph, and it's my plan. Listen to what Scripture says, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Listen, God knows who you are. God has plans for you because God knows you. I know you may be thinking, you already said that. Well, God knows you. He knows your place. He knows your place in time. But God knows you in the sense of He gets you. Listen, God gets you. Again, you got to remember, Joseph, as he considered all this, as he was struggling with what to believe, as his plans had all gone haywire, as he's trying to figure out what's up, what's down, God knows exactly what he was feeling, what he was struggling with. And listen, God knows exactly what you're feeling, what you're struggling with. God knows exactly what you're considering also. Just listen to what Scripture says. It's not up here. Psalms 139. Listen to what God knows about you. O Lord, you've examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel, when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Think about that. God knows my thoughts. He knows my words. The words don't even leave my mouth. They're not even formed. He already knows what's going to be said. He knows when I sit up or, or set up. He knows that too. When I sit or when I stand. We've got a couple of recliners uh, at our house, you know, his and hers. If you're downstairs, you can hear that crank going up or that spring click when coming down. Now, I'm an early morning person and my wife's a late night owl, right? So for me, I know when she's coming to bed because I hear that jolt to that spring, right? And in the morning, she knows when I'm getting up to go to work because she also hears that, or even when I'm sitting in my recliner reading my Bible because she hears that spring go backwards. Now listen, here's the issue. When I hear that spring up and she's come to bed, I'm excited. Hey, my wife's come to bed. <laughs> but in the morning, while she's still sleeping, she hates that spring. <laughs> it's a one-way love affair, people. <laughs> God knows, literally, he, he knows you sitting right here. He knows the moment you're going to get up from the seat. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're considering. He knows your thoughts. He knows all of it. You understand in knowing that, he gets you. He gets it. It says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. I, if I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell... By the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. David wrote this psalm. I'm thinking when he says your workmanship's marvelous, David's thinking, hey, you did a pretty good job here. <laughs> you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Ultrasounds, they've come a long way, haven't they? I saw something, you know... They had a little, what it go from 2D to 3D to 4D. Now you can get, I just saw this this week, you can get a 4D model of your baby 
at any point. I'm talking a molded plastic, you know, that's crazy, right? <laughs> Beth, it's creepy. <laughs> and yet, listen, God knows what you look like before any of that stuff, right? No surprise to God. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Does that sound like there's a plan? How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. So that last line there, can you, when you think of everything that was said, you think and understand how much God thinks about you? He thinks about you because he cares about you. And even when you're not thinking about him, God's thinking about you, right? He never stops thinking about you. What was the angel of the Lord ultimately saying to Joseph? Listen, I know you doubt Mary's story. It seems a little outlandish. I know you've got questions. I know you're struggling with what to believe. But listen, it's true. And you might doubt her story, but don't doubt my word. Joseph was considering a decision based off Mary's story. One way of thinking based off what he knew. And again, he's not buying the story. Let's be honest. He's already he's considering, but he's already kind of made that step of what he's going to do because, again, he doesn't believe what she's telling him, so he's making plans to put her away and then figure out what he's going to do. Verse 21. I want to change the tone of this. You've probably read this verse a thousand times, but just let me change the emphasis a little bit. Because when you read it, you just read, and she will have a son, you're going to name him Jesus. This is the angel speaking, so let's put a little emphasis on it that the angel might have put on it with Joseph. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. You get the difference? Joseph, this is happening. This is happening. She is pregnant. You're right, the child's not yours. The child is of God. She is going to have a child. It will be a son, and you, Joseph are to name him Jesus. So it's like, hey, Joseph, there's a plan here. I am working, and I want to involve you in what I'm doing. She's already in the plan because she chose to believe. What are you going to do, Joseph? What are you going to do? Joseph, as we know the story, went from considering to believing, believing God at his word, the angel gave Joseph from God an invitation to join in what he was doing. And then Joseph chose to handle things differently than what he'd been considering because, again, Joseph decided to exchange his plan for God's plan. Let me give you a statement here, and I want you to really think this through. God's Word will always lead you another way than what your normal thinking, reaction, or response will be. God's Word will always lead you a different way. I read the verses earlier. As God spoke, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Listen, you and I can't come up with what God's thinking. We're not God. And so, therefore, our thoughts are not going to be what his thoughts are. Again, it says, uh, your ways aren't my ways. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. Again, talking about being higher. We're not God. I mean, think about it. He's the creator. He's got that. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's Present everywhere. All, I mean, how can we even fathom that God is everywhere all the time? That he knows everything from before the beginning till the forever and ongoing. Even us as believers, when we're one day in the presence of our Lord and Savior, listen, we'll still never be God. He will still be unveiling all of his workmanship to us, there will still be wonder and awe forever in heaven. 
It's not like you and I, we get there one day and we're enlightened with all enlightenment of everything. Listen, God's still all-knowing. God's word will always lead you to a crisis of belief. We've been studying this in our youth group. A crisis of belief, what's that talking about? It's talking about God's word says this, and I've got to make a decision. Do I believe what it says and then adjust my life according to what it says, or do I do my own thing? And that is a crisis of belief. If you choose to follow what God's word says, then all the blessings and all those things that go along with that follow. But if you want to do things your own way, then listen, you've got to own it because there's all the consequences that come that. And let's be honest, you think there's going to be blessing. There can't be blessing by going your own way. You know, I know every song in the world is, you know, go your own way, right? You know, but that's not... That's not the plan. Never has been. It might sound good to lyrics. It might tug at your heart. Be free. Do your own thing. But listen, you'll never be happy. There's no void that will ever be filled when you're outside of God's will and plan for your life. There can be no joy outside of God's plan. Listen, God wants you involved in what he's doing. When he's telling Joseph, she's going to have a son... You're to name him Jesus. That's that invitation. Hey, this is what I'm doing. I want you involved. I want you to join me. What are you going to believe, Joseph? You've got to choose what you believe, and then your actions, your choices, will declare what it is you believe. Right? Whatever you believe, your actions will declare what it is you believe. So when you go through that crisis of belief... Whatever you do during that will then declare what it is you chose to believe. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22, All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She'll give birth to a son. They'll call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. Verse 24 and 25 tell you uh, huge things about Joseph. First off, he chose to believe God's word. He hears from Mary, I'm pregnant. It's not yours. It's God's. What are you talking about, Mary? That's the lamest story ever. Just be honest with me, right? Be honest. I'll figure out what to do. I don't know what to do, but I'll handle this. I'll put you away. I'll move on. But the angel says, no, it's happening. Do you want to be a part of it? He wakes up from the, the dream, and he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, took her to be his wife. So he believed what God through the angel told him, right? He believed it. Now, verse 25, verse 25 is not talked a lot because, you know, it's got that word sex in there, all right? And nobody likes to talk about that, right? Well, people, God created it, all right? So it's okay to talk about it, but you need to understand what's happening in that verse because I want you to understand what Joseph really believed. So he takes her as his wife, and he doesn't, he's not intimate with her the entire time, even though she's his wife, the entire time she's pregnant. Why is that? Because he believes, this is not mine. This is the child of God. This is the Messiah. This is the long-expected Jesus. And I'm exchanging my plan for his plan. I believe it all. And I'm not going to do anything where anybody might think this is my kid. Because it's not. This is God's son. So it isn't just he believed the angel. He believed it all. The whole burrito. <laughs> this is the one that will save man from his sins. I will call him Jesus. The Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, but whoever believes in him should not perish, but have 
eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So let me just ask you some questions before we close and sing. Listen, is there anything you're struggling with today? Anything you're considering? Anything you're thinking, what am I going to do now? Do your actions speak to believing God's word? Or do they tell another story? You know, at the end of the year, as the new year approaches, we kind of reflect back, don't we? Which is a good thing. And we kind of start looking ahead. But I'm just curious, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, if I just roll back in my mind this year, does it reflect that I believe? Or does it tell another story? Because it definitely speaks of what I believe. What is it I believe? Listen, are you willing to be involved in what God is doing? Are you willing to exchange your plans for his plans? Joseph got his world turned upside down momentarily. Are you willing for God to turn your thinking and your world upside down momentarily to be part of his purpose and plan? that involves you in something great, something purposed, something that God has for you and you specifically and you only if you'll just follow His plan and be obedient to Him. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I just want you again, those questions I ask, just reflect back. Hey, what do I believe? What am I struggling with? What am I considering? What am I having a hard time figuring out what am I going to do. Listen, you're here. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. The Bible is very clear. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you've never turned to Him. Listen, today would be a great day to begin a relationship with your Creator, your Savior, the one who's always thinking about you. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's not about being good people. It's not about church denomination. It's not about giving. It's about receiving the free gift of salvation. I encourage you, if you haven't done that today, that you do so right here, right now. Listen, I can't save you, but I want to just lead you in a prayer. You just pray along with me. If you're here, you've never placed your faith. You've never chose to believe what he did for you. You can do that right here, right now. And I promise you, you won't be embarrassed at all. Just right there where you're saying, just say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you sent your son, God, to save me from my sins. God, I believe he came, he died. I believe he rose again. God, I believe that. I'm choosing to believe that, Lord, and I'm asking you to save me. Listen, if you're here and maybe your actions just don't line up with what you say you believe, well, listen, it's time to change your actions. Listen, it's time to get on God's plan. Exchange your plan for his plan. Because, listen, his plans for you are great. You are all he's thinking about. Be obedient to Him. And show that belief by living it out in your faith. Heavenly Father, as we come before You, God, we... Hey, it's Pastor Clayton again. I hope you were both challenged and encouraged by today's message. I want to invite you to come to the well. You can also visit us online at the-well-church.com and you can find us on Facebook. Until next time, remember that God's Word is the truth that you need today. For a